Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Newtown. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host Youth Piscar, and you're watching theCUBE here at Nutanix.next London 2018. Happy to welcome back to the program the co-founder, CEO, and chairman of Nutanix, Dirj Pandey. Dirj, thanks so much. Congratulations on 3,500 people uh, here at the, the third annual European show, and uh, thanks so much for having theCUBE. Thank you, my pleasure. All right, so Dirj, uh, first of all, you, you had a lot going on. Big company uh, event here. Last night you announced the, the Q1 uh, 2019 earnings. Uh, I, I guess step back for a second. Nutanix is now uh, nine years since the founding. Uh, you've been public now for, for a little while. Uh, you, you've got to be feeling good, you know. Companies reached a certain size, uh, you know, very respected in the marketplace. So, so how are you and the team feeling? Yeah, well, um, you know, I tell people that it's, it's actually fun to be a public company. And uh, obviously there is a, cost to being a public company because you're on a quarterly sort of treadmill in some sense, but uh, Wall Street also keeps you honest. Just like Main Street keeps you honest on quality of product and customer service, Wall Street keeps you honest on spend and you know what does it mean to really grow at scale. So I like the fact that there is uh, two good streets that are keeping the company honest and uh, it's really fun to think about uh, capital allocation, you know, one of the big things as you grow, I mean, you know, we're going to spend more than a billion dollars this year alone. How do you allocate capital uh, wisely? Is something that I think a lot about as well. Yeah, so uh, at, at this show you kind of uh, change some of the positioning of the portfolio. It, it's the uh, core, essentials, and enterprise, and right, that, that asset allocation, when I look at essential, you know, Xi Cloud, there's all these different pieces, some of them through acquisition, some of them created internally. Uh, you need to be careful that you don't overcommit, but you know, when do you si decide to, to kill stuff or, or, or keep it going? So, um, you got, got a lot of plates to spin now, yeah, a lot more than you did a year or two ago. Absolutely, and it's not just product development, it's also marketing and sales and GNA, I mean, there's other departments where you need to think hard about, like, how do you create brand awareness for these new things, you know? How do you do demand generation? How do you have a specialist sales force? You know, all those things have to be considered. So, you know, nine years, uh, it's, been, it's been a journey, but it still looks like it's nothing, and we're still a very small company, and need to think hard about the next five years, in some sense. Yeah, so, so one of the metrics you gave, you gave Wall Street to be able to look at is what percentage of customers are using uh, kind of more than just the core. So the essentials uh, or the enterprise, and I, if I got it right, it's up to 19% from 15% the, the, the quarter before. Um, you, you know, I, I wonder, is the packaging, how much of that is for Wall Street? Um, you know, somebody cynically might look and be like, hey, is the, is the, is the core market slowing down and therefore, uh, you know, you need to expand? We've all seen public companies that need to go into adjacencies and, uh, you know, shouldn't you stick to your knitting? You know, you, you've, you've got a great solid product with, with, with leadership yeah, in the marketplace. Absolutely. Well, so look, I mean, we are not bundling them in SKUs, so we cannot force customers to actually buy them. We are not doing uh, financial engineering of dollars because these are not SKUs or bundles. This is a journey which is uh, mostly uh, advisory in some sense. This is how you should start, this is how you should go, and this is an advisory for our sellers and our buyers and our channel people. Everybody needs to say, look, have we had the customer go through the journey? If we had to do what you just said, probably would have bundled them in SKUs and then allocated capital to one or the other. You know? I think uh, to your other comment about just sticking to the core, you know, Juniper is stuck to the core. Uh, and uh, you know many companies out there which just stayed as a single box company, they stayed at, at the core and eventually you realize the market has moved faster than your core itself. So, uh, I mean, there's this uh, business school thinking, they call it uh, the Icarus effect. So the Icarus effect is all about, I'm so good at what I do that I can fly to the sun and then nothing would happen, but you don't realize that in Icarus, you know, the wings were actually pasted using wax and you go to the sun and the sun actually melts the wax. So companies like FGI and Sun, um, Nortel, many companies just stuck to one thing so what and they obviously evolve actually. Obviously you're not sticking to the core alone, right? You're expanding the portfolio 
I mean, you're just not, not just an infrastructure company anymore. You do so much on top of the infrastructure on-prem. You have so many SaaS services. So how do you, how do you manage that portfolio in terms of the customer journey? Because there's so much to tell to a customer. How do you sell it? How do you convince a customer to go from you know, core to essentials to enterprise? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing is leverage. You know, uh, is essentials going to leverage core? And is the enterprise going to uh, leverage essentials uh, and core itself? Case in point, uh, files is completely built on top of core. So every time somebody's using files, they're also using core. Uh, if you think about flow, it uses AHV underneath, you know. Frame, as a case in point, when it's going to deliver desktops, it's going to use files, you know, because every desktop needs a filer as well. And then when Frame delivers desktops on-prem, it's going to use all the core. So the important thing is how they don't become disparate things, like they're all going in their own direction. Is there a level of uh, progressiveness where you say, well, if you're using the enterprise features, a lot of them actually going and dragging the core as well or essential. So how do we build that uh, progressive sort of uh, experience for the customer? where each of these layers are actually being utilized is the important piece actually. Yeah. Dheeraj, so you know, we're talking a lot about uh, you know, the expansion beyond the core, but uh, there was a pretty significant activity that your team did on core itself. Uh, so uh, the first time I heard about it, it, it was it basically said we're doing an entire file system rewrite. Think of it almost as AOS 2.0. Mm -hmm. Now, from a product name, I believe it's 5.10, so mm -hmm. I might have trouble remembering uh, which release it was, but you know, Talk about what went involved in that. Obviously, a lot has changed in the you know nine years since uh, you, you, you yeah. created. So yeah, I mean, yesterday in the earnings call, I talked about it too. That uh, people scoff at uh, core infrastructure, like oh, it's going to be a commodity because it's going to be good enough infrastructure. But then I argue that there's no such thing as good enough infrastructure. You know, and companies struggle when they don't focus on infrastructure itself. You know. Uh, it's like food, shelter, clothing, and the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you don't get that, then there's no point self-actualizing, actually. So, uh, core infrastructure, compute storage, networking, security, you got to get it right. I mean, look at Oracle, how it's struggling with IAS, and, and look at Google, they're trying to figure out how to make it relevant for the enterprise, and you know, Azure has like three, four different stacks for infrastructure, one for O365, one for Azure DB, one for Azure, and now they're rewriting it for Azure itself, you know. Um, you know, VMware has three different infrastructure stacks, you know, one for three tier, where they are very happily, you know, saying, look, let EMC and NetApps actually run underneath and Cisco's and stuff like that. And then they have uh, this software-defined infrastructure for co with commodity servers. And finally, they have VMware and AWS, which is going to use AWS services. So now you have three different forks of your code base in some sense, you know. And for us, what's important is how we use a single code base for everything. You know? So architecture matters, you know. I was arguing yesterday in the earnings call that good enough infrastructure is an oxymoron. You need to get core right before you can go and try to live the other layers of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, actually, you know. And that's why we went back uh, and thought about as the workloads were growing and increasing and we had mission critical stuff in memory databases, what did we need to really do about uh, you know, the way we lay out the data and lay out the metadata? So as you know, metadata is the core, as, at the core of anything in systems and especially storage systems. And uh, the metadata of uh, our erstwhile system was actually built completely distributed. And then we realized that some things can be local and some things can be distributed and that's better scale. Again, going back to this understanding of what things can be uh, represented locally for a certain disk yeah. versus what things need to be global so that you can you know, go and say, okay, where is this data really located, what drive? But once you go to the drive, you can actually get more metadata. So again, you're getting more progressive scanning. So, you know, uh, at, at the end of the day, our engineers are constantly thinking about performance and scalability, and you know, how do you change the wings of the plane at 35,000 feet? So it's but a very th big that's challenge. one of the issues, right? So you're still you know, focusing on your own infrastructure layer, right? But many customers do already have presence you know, in a different hardware stack, or the public cloud, or some service provider, so not everything runs on your platform. 
So how are you planning to you know, deliver the, the services on top to customers that don't necessarily run on AOS? So uh, that's the multi-cloud journey, which is basically the enterprise journey of our customers. Uh, I, you know, I, I said this yesterday in the earnings call as well that you know, all our services should be available both on-prem and off-prem. You know. This uh, idea of a VPC, that is multi-location, is what hybrid cloud is all about. So how do you get a virtual private cloud really span multiple clouds and multiple locations? Um, you know, I think uh, you saw from the demos today of how you're really running all of AOS on top of GCP uh, virtual infrastructure. And uh, in the course of the coming year or two, you'll see us do the same thing with bare metal Amazon and bare metal Azure, because they deliver servers, you know, in their data centers, and that's leverage for them because they've already gone and spent so much money on data centers that it's easy for them to deliver a physical server that our software can run on top of. And if people are not using AOS, they'll still want to use uh, things like Frame and Beam and Com and other such things. Yeah, Dirich. Want to get you know what are you hearing from customers and how do you think of of, of hybrid uh, as it were as you, you know a lot of a lot of attention gets played uh, to things like Azure Stack uh, from Microsoft uh, from VMware uh, on AWS um, I, I know you've got some viewpoints on this yeah no in fact uh, so if you go back five years hyperconvergence uh, had become a buzzword maybe three four years ago and there were a lot of companies doing hyperconvergence. And only one or two have survived. You know, it's us and VMware basically have survived that. You know. Everybody else has a checkbox because the customer said, "Well, what about that?" Like, well, we have a checkbox, but it's really about operating system sort of hyperconvergence, and it has to be honest. You know, it has to really blur the lines between compute and storage, networking and security. I think hybrid needs to be honest, and one of the killer things that hybrid needs is blurring the lines between networks bring the lines on storage so you can do one-click replication and one-click failover. So a lot of those things have required a lot of innovation from us. That's why we were delayed in, in Zai. You know, we didn't want to just put up data centers and just like that. I mean, if you go back in time to um, many hardware companies were putting OpenStack data centers and calling it their new cloud in response to Amazon. And VMware tried vCloud Air and they you know, had a charter to go spend money. They went and spent a ton of money on hardware without even knowing that the cloud is not about data centers. Cloud is about an experience. It's about e-commerce and computing coming together and you have to be passionate about a catalog. You know, the marketplace, the catalog, so that people can really go and consume things from a catalog. I think that's what our experience has been that look, if you don't think of it like a retail giant or a retail customer, which is what Amazon has done such a good job of, you know, they've thought about computing as an e-commerce problem as opposed to as a compute storage networking problem itself. You know. And those are the lessons that we have learned about hybrid just as much. You know. All right, uh, you, you did a nice job in the keynote laying out that you know, Nutanix, like your customers, you're going through through a journey, the, the crawl, walk, run, if you, if you will. Uh, we got a tease in the keynote this morning about some of the cloud native, uh, where you're going. Um, you know, the kind of final question for you is, if you, you look at the company, you said still it's still young, you know, where, where are your customers going? Where are some of the, the, the things they need to work on and that Nutanix will mature with them uh, as, we, as we look to, yeah. to move forward? Well, I mean, look, uh, I think everybody knows where customers are headed. The question is who fulfills the promise? Because the requirements are all the same. They all want to go and uh, use next generation infrastructure. They want to modernize their data centers, their infrastructure. They want to use some things that they want to own, some things they want to rent. The question is where is the best experience possible? And by that I mean not just systems experience of hybrid clouds, but also customer service. And, having an ever-growing catalog and being able to deliver things for developers and DevOps and, you know, and technology will come and go. Like, you know, two, three years ago, it was Puppet and Chef, it was like the hottest thing on town. Today it's Kubernetes, tomorrow it's going to be something else. It's the fact that what you say is what you do and what you do is what you say. You know, in our business, it's about integrity. You know, uh, I was uh, arguing about this yesterday in the earnings call as well, that. Building business software is a little bit easier. Now it's not, uh, I shouldn't trivialize it as much, but 
if people use business software, they can work around weaknesses of business software. But if you're in the business of infrastructure, applications cannot work around weaknesses of infrastructure. So integrity matters a lot in our space actually. And, and that is about great products, great customer service, you know, fast innovation, you know, recovering fast, being resilient. Those are the things that we focus a lot on. Well, Deeraj, thanks again, and always. We didn't even get to talk about uh, the, the with heart, uh, the, the fourth H that you've been talking about uh, for the honest, humble, and hungry. So thank you, congratulations to the team, and always appreciate you having on the program. My pleasure. All right, for you, Piskar, I'm Stu Miniman. Stay with us, two days live, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thanks for watching theCUBE. in the software and technology industry for over 12 years now. So I've had the opportunity as a marketer to